A lesson for all generations and for all people is that greatness comes in all colors. Blacks in technology have a long and illustrious heritage, though it may not have made it into the history books very often. Among the countless numbers who forged the way at a time when the odds were practically insurmountable is Sarah E. Good, who was born into slavery in 1850. In 1885, she was the first African-American woman to be granted a patent by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for her invention, the cabinet bed. The bed folded into a piece of furniture and later became known as the hideaway. Granville T. Woods, an electrical and mechanical engineer and inventor, was called the Black Edison. Among his more than 60 patents, he is credited with developing the third rail concept in mass transit subway systems and the trolley system for trolley cars. In 1881, scientist Lewis Howard Latimer invented an incandescent light bulb with a carbon filament. This was a much improved, more practical version of Thomas Edison's original bulb, which had a bamboo filament and burned out in just 30 hours. Lewis became an engineer for the Edison Company and wrote the first textbook on its lighting system. Sarah Breedlove McWilliams Walker, better known as Madam Walker, dramatically impacted the cosmetic and hair industries. A washerwoman, she supplemented her meager income selling her homemade beauty products door to door. Sarah's business grew into a corporation that employed thousands and she was the first African American woman to become a self-made millionaire. Garrett Morgan developed the breathing helmet and smoke protector that was the prototype of the gas mask. In 1916, he used his device to help rescue workers trapped in a tunnel following the explosion at the Cleveland Water Works. Elijah McCoy, the son of runaway slaves from Kentucky, was born in Canada. He later came to the United States as an adult, worked in a machine shop, and set out to find a way to lubricate machines while they were in motion rather than having to shut them down. In 1873, he achieved success, and his device revolutionized railway steamship and manufacturing industries worldwide. So reliable was his invention that customers would ask, is this the real McCoy, to make sure that they were not getting a poor imitation. And yes, that's how the expression originated. Frederick Jones historically advanced the food transport industry. He developed the first automatic mobile refrigeration system for long-haul trucks. It was also adapted for rail and ship trans 49. The company that Frederick jointly founded was a three million a year business. And George Washington Carver was the granddaddy of technology and discovery. In fact, you can tell your kids to thank him for their sandwiches because he developed 325 uses for peanuts including peanut butter. He also created adhesives, axle grease, bleach, buttermilk, chili sauce, fuel briquettes, ink, instant coffee, linoleum, mayonnaise, meat tenderizer, metal polish, paper, plastic, shaving cream, and shoe polish. These are but a few of the many geniuses who paved the way. To quote engineer Byron L. Crudup, Black minds have been inventors, engineers, and master builders since antiquity. We must maintain the time-honored tradition in preparation for the 21st century and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, in this grand tradition, we proudly present our top 50 blacks in technology who descend from those who came before them. Here are our own portraits of greatness. Rodney C. Atkins, Vice President, Development, IBM Systems and Technology Group. Pagan L. Alves, President, Sprint Business Solutions, Strategic Sprint Corporation. Dr. James R. Andrade, Vice President, Research and Development, Asia Pacific, Kraft Foods Incorporated. Tony Thomas K. Brown, Senior Vice President, Global Purchasing, Ford Motor Company. Dr. Philip L. Clay, Chancellor and Professor of City Planning, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. 
Norma B. Clayton, Vice President, Supplier of Management, Boeing Integrated Defense Systems. Joseph R. Cleveland, Chief Information Officer, Lockheed Martin Corporation. Will Cooksey Jr., Plant Manager, Bowling Green, Assembly Plant, General Motors Corporation. Errol B. Davis Jr., Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Alliant Energy Corporation. Martin Davis, Corporate Chief Information Officer and Executive Vice President, Wachovia Corporation. Dallas Delaney, Operations Manager, Abbott Park, Finishing Goods Manufacturing, Global Pharmaceutical Operations, Abbott. Dr. Yvonne B. Freeman, Executive Director, SACME Incorporated. Linda Gooden, President, Lockheed Martin Information Technology. Colonel Frederick D. Gregory, NASA Deputy Administrator, National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Wilstein D. Hill, Vice President and Chief Information Officer, Missile Systems, Raytheon Company. Major General Milton Hunter, U.S. Army Retired. Senior Vice President, Parsons Infrastructure and Technology, Parsons Corporation. Anthony R. James, President and Chief Executive Officer, Savannah Electric and Power Company. General Frank L. Miller, Jr., U.S. Army Retired. Vice President, Public Operations, Dell Incorporated. Gregory B. Morrison, Vice President and Chief Information Officer, Cox Enterprises Incorporated. Patricia A. Newby, President Zetron. General Lloyd W. Fig Newton, U.S. Air Force Retired, Executive Vice President Pratt & Whitney. Valerie Parrish Porter, Vice President, Enterprise Services, Sprint Corporation. The Honorable Philip Paulwell, Minister of Commerce, Science and Technology, Government of Jamaica. Roy G. Perry, Corporate Vice President, Global Supply Chain and Information Systems, Storage Technology Corporation. Dr. George D. Patterson, Executive Director, ABIT Incorporated. Dr. Cecil B. Pickett, Senior Vice President and President, Sharing Plow Research Institute. William D. Smith, PE, President, Parsons Brinkerhoff, Quaid and Douglas Incorporated, Parsons Brinkerhoff Incorporated. Albert L. Turvalon, Director, Glass Operations, Vistion Corporation. Dr. Lydia W. Thomas, President and Chief Executive Officer, Member Board of Trustees, Mitre Tech Systems Incorporated. Lloyd G. Trotter. President and Chief Executive Officer, GE Consumer and Industrial. David G. Turner, Senior Executive Vice President, MBNA America. Belinda G. Watkins, Vice President, Network Computing and IT Operations, FedEx Services Incorporated. Edward T. Wellburn, Jr., Vice President of Design, North America General Motors Corporation. James E. West, 
Research Professor, Electrical and Computer Engineering and Computer Engineering Department, Whiting School of Engineering, the Johns Hopkins University. George A. Williams, Vice President Operations, Grand Gulf Nuclear Station, Entergy Corporation. General Johnny E. Wilson, U.S. Army retired, President and Chief Operating Officer, Dimensions International Incorporated. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them all a great round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our hosts and co-sponsors of this great evening from Parsons Corporation, Senior Vice President Jim Thrash. Ladies and gentlemen, let us salute this evening's worthy honorees. Let's also applaud our entertainment, the Gumption Group and Lady A. A review of the accomplishments and achievements of our honorees, these great men and women, the top 50 blacks in technology, confirms what we have always known. There's never been a lack of black achievements in technology. The world's history is replete with black achievements. From the great world cities of East Africa, to the latest patents for our newest automobiles, from civil engineering to biotechnical engineering, there's never been a lack of black achievements, only a lack of equal opportunity and public acknowledgments. Black men and women have perfected the development of iron long before early Europeans. Early black astronomers identified and classified faraway constellations. Open heart surgery, blood plasma, the real McCoy that you just saw, a braking system for railroad locomotives, the layout of Washington, D.C., software, hardware, telecommunications, weapon systems, 
These are just some of the contributions black men and women have made to a grateful world. Tonight's honorees have, in the words of George Washington Carver, measured success by their service. They have looked at the stars and have not been afraid to move forward. The widely quotable playwright Oscar Wilde observed with a smile, we're all lying in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. There's certainly no shortage of stargazers here tonight. This room is filled with stars and the light of accomplishment is everywhere. We at Parsons are especially proud that one of your honored stargazers is a member of the Parsons family of companies. We are fortunate to have General Milt Hunter, who has embellished our organization with esteem and respect. He is a tribute to us, his family, and his nation. Parsons is honored to be a sponsor for this gathering tonight. We salute all of the honorees. Our company's core values of safety, integrity, innovation, respect, diversity, and competence match the attributes of the honorees very well, and we are thus fully aligned with this evening's program. Now it's my pleasure to introduce from our co-sponsor, Intergy, the President of Nuclear Operations, John McGahey. John? Thank you and good evening. It is a, di a distinct pleasure for Entergy to serve as a sponsor for this event. Our Entergy team is uh, certainly here to celebrate the accomplishments for which George A. Williams is being recognized. But we are also thrilled to be part of the recognition for all of the distinguished honorees. If Gary Taylor, our nuclear CEO, or Wayne Leonard, our Entergy CEO, were here, they would be energized and probably more eloquent, eloquent than I in communicating their zeal in support of this most important event. Why? Because Energy is truly committed to creating, nurturing, and leveraging the richness of a diverse workforce. And I think it's important to note that the traditional definition of diversity race, gender, and age has appropriately evolved to include anything that makes us different from one another. And the selectees being honored tonight have definitely demonstrated diversity in that context and by their accomplishments. So the editors of US Black Engineer and Information Technology Magazine are to be commended. You have chosen well by selecting the individuals being honored tonight. My sincere congratulations to all of you. The top 50 blacks in technology should feel proud of their accomplishments. But I would be remiss if I did not also congratulate the honorees, spouses, families, friends, colleagues, and other stakeholders. My personal view is that the achievements being recognized tonight can only be attained through the positive support and sacrifices by you. So thank you as well for making this event possible and I think we ought to give them all a round of applause. Now I believe we're gonna break for dinner. Now it's time for all of us to enjoy our dinner and share each other's company. It's only fitting that on an evening like this, celebrating the portraits of greatness, that our dinner music by the Gumption Group features instrumental versions of the greats in black music. Enjoy, our program will resume shortly.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Executive Vice President, the Boeing Company, President and Chief Executive Officer of Integrated Defense Systems, Jim Alba. everyone. Certainly is an honor for me to be here tonight. I was asked to recognize Norma Clayton who runs the material organization for us in IDS. And I know the remarks that I'll make about Norma will also fit all 50 of the honorees tonight. These truly are people that are changing our world each and every day with what they do. Now I know I speak for Norma when I say that we could not work in a better industry than aerospace. And I look out into the audience and I see many aerospace partners and certainly the, the elite of U.S. aerospace is here, the Lockheed, Raytheon, Northrop, Pratt & Whitney, uh, on and on and on. It's an industry that I think in the 20th century truly did change the world. Uh, with flights uh, at Kitty Hawk, World War II, the jet age, and then going to space. And it's an industry that I know will reinvent itself again in the 21st century. At Boeing, we touch a big part of aerospace, and Norma Clayton manages about $15 billion worth of that for the Boeing company. You know, from radars to landing gear, it's Norma's responsibility. Norma is not only a great engineer, she was the a 2000, a year 2000 honoree here at this dinner, but she's also a great person and a great manager. After being a good engineer for us and for GE prior to coming to the Boeing Company, we put her in charge of a 2,000-person machine shop in St. Louis. After straightening that out, we put her into the worst factory we had down in San Antonio. Bad morale, racial strife, poor productivity, and within a year and a half, I'm proud to say, I was able to take the board down there and show them a showcase enterprise managed by Norma. When I look for people, I look for good business people first. I look for people that will work together as a team, and I look for people that really understand their customer along with great integrity. And I can't think of anybody that fits those four criteria better than Norma. I also look for people that are willing to push back and tell me I'm wrong, and that's something that's a real strong suit for Norma, I can tell you that. <laughs> She's got a passion for her job, for her people, and our community. She gets the job done anytime it's given to her. Uh, when you put her into a new community, she takes over. When she went to San Antonio, she immediately became in charge of the festival celebration they have down there every year. And for the Boeing Company, she ran our uh, employee uh, community service project where we go out and we uh, solicit donations to the communities from all of our employees and did a great job there. But I think where she really shines is with employees. I don't know how many people she mentors more than I can count. Uh, she always has time for another, and uh, she mentors me on occasion, and I need that often. She's active in her church. I could go on and on for about Norma. They gave me two minutes, and I know I've taken more than I should, but I just want to say that I'm, I'm very lucky to have her working on the Boeing team. I want to thank everybody here for honoring Norma, and I want to thank the uh, the Career Communications Organization for making this a great event that it is. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, our hosts, Jim Thrash and John McGee. Men and women who we celebrate tonight are examples of what happens when greatness is given an opportunity and an environment in which to grow and thrive. As we know, to do great work, you need strength and perseverance. This is kind of like the Academy Awards. Do you have the envelope for us to open? We all walk a tightrope that stretched high above the naysayers, the critics, the doubting Thomases, and 
the doubting Thomasinas. <laughs> we may hear their voices, but they need not dissuade us from our course. Uh, Albert Einstein stated it best when he said that great spirits have always encountered violent opposition from mediocre minds. Tonight we celebrate the great spirits that came out on top, our top 50 blacks in technology. Edward T. Welburn grew up dreaming about designing cars. He started at GM in 1972 and became the chief designer for the biggest automobile maker in the world. Today, Edward is VP for Design at GM's North America Center. You can be sure that everyone who rides in a car is within arm's length of Barbara Saunders' numerous and innovative automotive products. Barbara skillfully directs R&D for Delphi Thermal and Interior Systems, a subsidiary of the largest auto parts manufacturer in the world. Byron M. Green has been on the automotive fast track. He was a GM process engineer, a Ford manufacturing development engineer, and a GM production superintendent before moving to Daimler Chrysler, where Byron is VP for Truck and Activity Vehicle Assembly Operations, managing six U.S. plants with 16,000 workers. Nissan cars gained popularity because of the perception of Japanese automakers' quality control. Ever since Greg Daniels joined Nissan, He's been driving home that point. Now Greg is Senior VP for U.S. Manufacturing at Nissan North America Incorporated. On the logistical side of the automaking business, Thomas K. Brown began in training as Director of Ford Purchasing Global Strategic Planning and Process Leadership. Today, as VP for Global Purchasing, Thomas oversees more than $90 billion worth of procurement worldwide for all eight Ford brands. Now let's change gears from automotive to information technology. Retired Army General John Watkins, Jr., Fairchild Semiconductor Corporation Senior VP and CIO, is at home in this epicenter of the computer revolution. Former head of the Defense Information Systems Agency, he has built and managed White House communications, run satellite, optical fiber, and other data and voice communications for the armed services, and managed emergency civil defense communications. Belinda G. Watkins, VP Network Computing and IT Operations for Federal Express, leads FedEx's network computing organization, which develops, designs, and engineers network-based solutions that support both strategic corporate projects and ongoing user requirements. Joseph R. Cleveland is CIO of defense giant Lockheed Martin Corporation. He's responsible for formulating Lockheed Martin's IT vision and strategy, consolidating IT resources, implementing e-commerce initiatives, leveraging economies of scale, and supporting Lockheed Martin businesses. H. James Dallas joined the Georgia Pacific Corporation as a cost accountant for one of its divisions. Today, he is VP and CIO of this $25 billion Atlanta-based company whose building products are household words. Monty Ford, American Airlines Senior VP and CIO, oversees the organization's information systems. He started out as a marketing representative for the digital equipment company and landed at American Airlines in 2000. Wilstein D. Hill is IT VP and CIO at Raytheon Missile Systems, where she manages a complex setup that supports more than 10,000 employees. Wilstein has more than 30 years' experience in the defense industry, from manufacturing operations and quality control to product evaluation and test operations. Standing at the helm, guiding many of America's corporate ships, are these top-notch technology leaders. Linda Gooden is president of Lockheed Martin Information Technology. An officer of the parent Lockheed Martin Corporation, Linda leads a fast-growing 11,000-employee organization selling IT services to federal agencies across the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Ladies and gentlemen, Linda Gooden.
Thank you. It is an honor to be here this evening. As I was preparing my remarks for tonight's event, I was considering all of the great black leaders in technology who could easily have his or her own portrait of greatness. How could I choose just one out of a field that includes the likes of the heart surgeon pioneer Daniel H. Williams, or Benjamin O. Davis and Frank Mann of the Tuskegee Airmen. So I took a page out of the late Shirley Chisholm's book and decided to solve this dilemma by approaching the topic from a different perspective, the perspective of an artist. When painting a portrait, an artist attempts to capture the very essence of the subject at a specific moment in time. For most of us, the challenge of translating something as multifaceted as an individual's life into two dimensions is an awesome challenge, if not impossible. But the artist sees it differently, and upon closer examination of the portrait, we began to see what the artist sees. He starts to appreciate the complexity that makes up the single powerful image. We see the texture in each brush stroke, the palette of colors selected, the emotion embedded through layer upon layer of paint, all consciously chosen and purposely placed. No one thing, not texture, not color, not composition stands on its own, each requiring the other qualities to bring the portrait completely into life. The same is true as we look back to recognize the leaders in technology who have preceded us. They have created a portrait of greatness filled with achievements and contributions too numerous to list at risk of leaving out the one that could make the difference between a painting of a portrait and creating a masterpiece. Best of all, the portrait continues to build and shape itself over time. From the experience of the people being honored here tonight to our future leaders, who will add their own perspectives to transform the portrait into something we can only imagine today. Thank you for your time and congratulations to all of the honorees. William D. Smith is president of Parsons, Brinkerhoff, Quaid, and Douglas Incorporated, the oldest and largest operating company of engineering consulting giant Parsons, Brinkerhoff, Inc. He oversees 3,000 employees in 60 offices across the country. The hotshots in the air traffic control sector had never seen a female supervisory engineer, but Patricia A. Newby changed perceptions as she brought positive change to the division during its acquisition by Northrop Grumman. Then, four years ago, Patricia took on the challenge of running the then-troubled Zetron division, which is growing under her direction. Educated in Great Britain and America, Noah Samara saw telecommunications models that did not exist in Ethiopia and Tanzania where he grew up. He learned the ropes and founded World Space, which began broadcasting to Africa and later to Latin America. Meanwhile, Noah co-founded XM Satellite Radio. Dr. Lydia W. Thomas is president and CEO of Mitre Tech Systems Incorporated. She directs environmental protection services to local and federal government agencies. Lydia serves on the Bush administration's Homeland Security Advisory Council and is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lydia Thomas. Well, this is just terrific. Thank you so very much for that uh, warm welcome and acknowledgement of uh, my really very mediocre um, career in comparison to so many of these people. Tyrone, I don't like surprises, and this is really a big one. <laughs> uh, I think that there is supposed to be a lady up here right now that's not Lydia Thomas, but somebody else. But uh, let me thank all of you for being here. Let me thank Career Communications for this absolutely wonderful uh, evening and to acknowledge all of my fellow honorees and tell you that I am indeed extremely honored to be counted among the people in this group. And I applaud everyone in the audience and thank you so much for coming. And now I hope whoever's supposed to be here, 
we'll take over. Thank you. Moving along in the executive suite, in 2000, Errol Davis Jr. was named chairman of the board of Alliant Energy, which has $7.8 billion in assets and annual operating revenues of $3.1 billion. He'd moved to the utility industry after stints at Ford Motor Company and Xerox Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, Errol Davis Jr. Thank you very much, and thank you for using my high school graduation photo there. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it's an honor for me to be here this evening to really be recognized among these wonderful and high achieving uh, women and men, and I thank you very much for that. I've been given two minutes to provide my thoughts primarily to young people on achieving success. Now, this is two minutes is going to be a little difficult for me because I was raised in a Southern Baptist tradition. So, but I'm going to give it my best shot here. So I've thought about this, and I, I want to share three lessons I've learned through almost 40 years uh, in business. Uh, and first is always strive for improvement. Never, ever accept the way things are, no matter how good they seem to be at the moment. Continuous improvement is simply a way of life for successful people. They're constantly learning new skills, reading, networking, attending conferences, improving their physical and mental health, and seeking feedback on their personal performance. And when they get that feedback, they act on it. They change, they intellectually expand, they improve, and they advance in their careers. My second lesson is to Live your values and your principles. Successful people walk the talk. What they do speaks much louder than what they say. They never make promises they can't keep, and they keep every promise they make. You already have what it takes to do the right things, a moral compass. You just have to use it. I advise young people to remember that your personal integrity and your reputation are yours, and yours alone, both to develop and protect. Guard them carefully. Once you veer off course, it's extremely difficult to get back on track. Lastly, I would encourage you to take responsibility and accountability for your performance. I am not blind to racism. It's out there probably as much as ever, but it doesn't mean we can check out and quit trying. Victimitis or blaming someone else or something else never leads to peak performance. Victims do get help. Victims do get sympathy. Victims sometimes even get assistance. But victims don't get promoted. You have to believe that you can do what you want to do, whatever you're qualified to do, and whatever you're entitled to do. Unfortunately, even today, you may have to try harder because of your sex or the color of your skin. So, try harder. You may not be able to be successful everywhere or all of the time. No one is. But with perseverance and fortitude, it is doable. There's really no mystery here. The power to be successful is within your grasp. Just go out and do it. Good luck, and thank you again for this wonderful recognition. <laughs> Across the country, Anthony R. James, powered along a similar circuit that led to his present position as president and CEO of Savannah Electric and Power Company. Anthony grew up in the South during its turbulent shift to a more open society. He joined a then-experimental Procter & Gamble operation that showed him how an integrated society is supposed to work. After joining the Southern Company in 1978, he began his electrifying rise. Lloyd G. Trotter is president and CEO of General Electric Consumer and Industrial, an industry leader in producing major appliance and lighting products, and in integrated industrial equipment, systems, and services. The global company employs 73,000 people in 150 locations. Pagat Alves is president of Sprint Business Solutions. 
He joined Sprint in 1996 after serving as executive VP and COO for Murata Business Systems. He was also CEO of Point One Telecommunications Inc. and President and COO of Centennial Communications. Joining the ranks of those who head up other major operations is Valerie Parrish Porter, Sprint VP Enterprise Services. Valerie is responsible for achieving customer focused success in computer operations, engineering, mailing services, and desktop operations support. Now Executive VP for Military Engines for United Technologies Pratt & Whitney, Lloyd W. Fig Newton is in charge of spinning up the turbines that power America's jet fighters, bombers, and transports to their places at the top of the pecking order in world military affairs. Before retiring from the Air Force after 34 years' service, Lloyd had been a fighter pilot and had risen to four-star general. Ladies and gentlemen, General Lloyd W. Fig Newton. Thank you very much, and uh, that was quite an introduction. Uh, I truly appreciate that, and, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, gentlemen and uh, obviously it's a great honor for me to have the opportunity to be standing here with this evening with all of these terrific people that I've had the opportunity to see briefly and to meet. And Tyrone, I want to say thanks to you and Career Communications and the entire family for making this possible. I realize you've been doing this for a number of years now. And like all of the others that came before me, they said, I only have two minutes as well. Uh, Johnny Wilson can attest, you'd never tell a general he only has two minutes to do anything. <laughs> but I will certainly uh, stick to that. As Jim Albaugh mentioned with reference to the aerospace industry, I do believe that uh, America is an aerospace nation. And we continue to push the outer edge of the envelope every single day. And that's one of the things with all of the industries that we have in America have allowed us to stay on the cutting edge of technology for such a long period of time. The issue I think we face is how do we stay there as we look into the future? We see these top 50 people that are here tonight that are being recognized, just a sample of all the great talent that's out there. But as the speaker just before me mentioned, I think we must figure out a way to how do we push that to those youngsters that are coming behind us that will allow us to continue to keep America leading the globe in various technologies that make us comfortable and free as people. It was also stated that it is, uh, it is not where you're from in this country, but it's where you're going. And a lot of folks here have decided that they want to go for the long haul and for the long distance to achieve those goals at which they set for themselves such a long time ago. And so, in closing, I will say, it is our responsibility to ensure that we have that same kind of drive in our young people that are coming behind us that can take us higher, farther, and faster than we've ever been before. Thank you very, very much. Frank Miller, a retired Major General after 32 years of Army service, is deeply involved in education as VP of Public Sector Operations for Dell, Inc. He's one of the highly placed black executives putting computers into the hands of teachers and students and into state, local, and federal government offices across the country. Al Zoller joined IBM the year that the Commodore PET, TRS-80, and Apple II wowed consumers. He then worked as software group lab director for IBM's PC business. When IBM bought Lotus, he was made its chief. Al ultimately became general manager of Tivoli Software, where he's helping IBM to push the envelope again. 
Rodney Atkins' star keeps rising. Last year, he was GM of the IBM Software Group's Pervasive Computing Initiative, driving IBM to recognition as the market leader. This year, Rodney leads a worldwide team as VP for Development of IBM Systems and Technology Group. As VP for Oracle's global licensing and pricing strategy, Jacqueline Woods negotiates multi-million dollar deals. The consummate strategizer, she drove Oracle's e-business standardization initiative, yielding savings of one billion dollars over three years. Jacqueline also induced Oracle to become the first major software company to publish comprehensive guidelines on global pricing and licensing. Gregory B. Morrison is VP and CIO for Cox Enterprises, one of the nation's leading mass media companies and providers of automotive services. Its flagship Atlanta newspapers break news that's quoted all over the world, and its other media properties touch the lives of millions. Gregory makes it happen. David G. Turner is another customer and technology leader. MBNA, the world's largest independent credit card issuer, initially snapped him up to lead the company's e-business channel and internet operations, which support more than seven million customers. Now he is senior executive VP of MBNA. Many know Milton Hunter as the former Army Corps of Engineers Seattle District Commander who won kudos for leading recovery efforts after the disastrous Northwest storms of 1992. Milton retired in 2001 as a major general and is now senior VP Infrastructure and Technology Group for Parsons Corporation. Ladies and gentlemen, Major General Milton Hunter. Portraits of greatness. What a fitting theme for tonight's celebration of achievement in our professional lives. Admiral William Hosney said, "There aren't any great men. There are just great challenges that ordinary men are forced to meet." So I'm truly honored uh, in recognition of meeting the many challenges I've faced in my life. Now I have a lot of remarks to make tonight. As you heard, General Newton says, "You never tell a general two minutes." We don't operate under that principle. But I do have probably three points I'd like to make. I can only echo what my distinguished colleagues said earlier this evening in terms of the future and where we fit. But we all have to give thanks to Career Communications Group, Tyrone Tabern, and his. Committee select us for this honor. They've done great things for as long as I've known Tyrone, which is most of the time that this event has occurred. They continue to showcase some of the finest talent in the African American community to show that all of America can benefit from this enormous talent that's in the room and out in front of us. Second, I'm glad to be able to share this moment with family and friends and. Such a distinguished group of peers, I hardly recognize how I fit with all the tremendous talent that's here, representing the leaders in technology, because we can make it our friend or our enemy. But one thing is clear: it will be our future, which is now. But I have my wife here, Karina, tonight, my greatest colleague, supporter, and critic. I have my fellow colleagues from my current employer, Parsons Corporation, an enormous uh, organization of capability as we push the technological edge in what we do, and my former employer, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. <laughs> I thought I could wake them up. <laughs> an enormous group of talented people I had the privilege to serve with for over 34 years. But I think the message here tonight is really for our young people, because they're always seeking advice from those of us who have been challenged in our lives to do things, to follow dreams, to look for that magic formula. And so tonight, I'm going to share with them my special formula for success. 
First, there is no secret formula. <laughs> Forget that story. But there are some principles that I think we all have lived by, many of my colleagues, and certainly myself, that have really made us appear successful. For we have achieved some things in our lives <clears throat> that have made it meaningful. But I think it really boils down to these things. Believing in God and his blessings. There is no way that we could have come from where we came to be where we are. And we expect that our youth would carry it the rest of the way. Second is always learning from life's challenges and finding ways to overcome any obstacles. You heard the story of my distinguished colleague about victimization. We have and we haven't. But if there is an obstacle, you have a choice. Run into it, go over it, or go around it. You pick that choice. Stay and focus on your goals and never quit it. Because if you quit, you can't say you really tried. Because you ran into that first obstacle that seemed so hard. But I can tell you that looking back, there are a lot of little bumps in the road that we thought were mountains, and they really were bumps in the road. And most importantly, getting along with others from all walks of life. Because the more we think we're different, the more we find we're alike. Any country, any ethnic group around this world that I've traveled extensively, as many have, you'll find that we have the same basic desires for happiness in lives, for happiness with our families, and to make a decent living. But for our youth, I say to you, follow your dreams. Don't ever veer away from following your dreams. And you heard it earlier. Never, never, ever compromise your integrity. It takes a lifetime to build a reputation and a nanosecond to destroy it. And finally, have enthusiasm in all you do. It's infectious. It sets the altitude and attitude in your pursuit of success in life. That's it. My secret formula. Thank you very much. Al Turvalon's products protect your safety and comfort every day. Al directs glass operation at Visteon, the company Ford spun off to provide auto parts to many auto manufacturers and is responsible for all segment operations. As Senior VP of Sharing Plow Corporation and President of the Sharing Plow Research Institute, Dr. Cecil B. Pickett leads and manages internal R&D efforts and collaborations with partner entities to discover and develop advanced drug therapies to meet important medical needs for the parent company. Roy G. Perry is Corporate VP, Global Supply Chain and Information Systems for Storage Tech, a $2 billion supplier of digital data storage solutions to customers worldwide. Roy worked for Dell Corporation as Vice President of Dimension, Latitude, and Inspiron Manufacturing Operations, producing an historic manufacturing cost and productivity turnaround. When it comes to technology in the public policy arena, Look to the island nation of Barbados, a technology hotbed. Barbados Senator Lynette Eastman, who was appointed Minister of Commerce, Consumer Affairs, and Business Development, is pushing initiatives in electronic commerce and driving a national information technology strategic plan. Philip Paulwell, a member of the Jamaican Parliament and Senator Eastman's counterpart as Minister of Commerce, Science, and Technology, is pursuing a similar course. He's promoting the building of a national information infrastructure that will equip his nation to participate fully in the information revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Philip Paulwell. No, I'm not a... Uh general in the army. I'm not a Baptist minister. I am a politician, but one of the few who will stick to a two-minute presentation. 
And so I want to relieve the teleprompter of your duties tonight because I will refrain from going through that 20-minute presentation. And just to say that I accept this award on behalf of the government and people of Jamaica. We have been involved in a very interesting and sometimes risky experiment of trying to transform Jamaica, an island economy, to a true knowledge-based society. Yes, many of you are aware of Jamaica because perhaps of your tourism contribution. And uh, tonight, you would really love to be in Jamaica, wouldn't you? <laughs> and of course, some of you are aware of our fine music, our coffee, and rum, and so on. But the truth is, <laughs> as we explode into this new era of globalization, much of what we do is threatened, our sugar, our bananas, and we now have to find a new path. And for us, this is the creation of a knowledge-based society. And the experimentation is far advanced. In fact, we started some years ago with the creation of this Ministry of Technology to see how we can use information communication technology, and of course, science and technology to effect this transformation. And Tyrone will attest to the fact that we were tied up into an arrangement first in our telecommunications that was quite backward. And if we never affect that, then we would not have seen competition in telecommunications until the year 2038. We were able to dismantle that. And starting in 2000, we are now fully liberalized and led the Caribbean in this way. And as a result of which, we've seen investments of over 600 million US. We've seen a dramatic transformation in density from 30% to over 80%. Indeed, today, out of a population of 2.6 million, we have 2.3 million phones, wireless and wired. A higher level of penetration of cell phones than the United States of America. <laughs> we are now moving to the final stage of creating that infrastructure for a truly knowledge-based society. And by October of this year, we're going to see competition in fiber optics cable. In fact, two licensees will be um, providing fiber to our country to enable us to have greater access to broadband technology so that we can move from our people talking as much as we do to a society where we can truly be a part of this information age, where we can truly participate in the world of the internet, where we can be vibrant in opening up our government to e-government, so that our people can have easier access to our government, so that we can be more transparent, so that our education system can be transformed by our e-learning project. Yes, we do have our doubting Thomases and Thomasinas, <laughs> but the struggle continues, and the mission is indeed to create transformation. Thank you very much for this award. And, uh, on behalf of the people of Jamaica, I bless you. Adama Samasiku, former Mali Minister of Education and current president of the African Academy of Languages, was president of the preparatory committee for the Geneva phase of the World Summit on the Information Society. He led a high-level organizing committee established under the patronage of Secretary General Kofi Annan to coordinate UN efforts to develop a clear statement of the political will to spread the benefits of the information society to all nations. If you want to go to the head of the class, look no further than James E. West, who retired three years ago as a Lucent Technologies Bell Laboratories Fellow and is still on the hunt for new discoveries as a Johns Hopkins University Research Professor. Dr. George Peterson is Executive Director of the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, Inc., the accrediting body for technology education in America. A former Air Force Academy and Naval Academy professor, he also taught at Morgan State University and served as Associate Director of the Johns Hopkins Space Grant Consortium. Dr. Yvonne B. Freeman works the other end of the education pipeline, getting students involved in technology education. 
Dr. Freeman is the executive director of SECME, Inc., that links 43 member engineering universities, 110 school systems with 900-plus K-12 schools in 17 states, the District of Columbia, and the Grand Bahamas, and 70 corporate and government agency investors. Now, keep your eye on these high-flying achievers. Retired Air Force Colonel and astronaut, Frederick D. Gregory is now NASA's Deputy Administrator. He had served as Astronaut Office Representative at the Kennedy Space Center during the initial orbiter checkout and launch support for the first space shuttle missions. He also flew three shuttle missions, logging 455 hours in space. Retired Army General Johnny E. Wilson has had a storybook climb. Now president and COO of the engineering consulting firm Dimensions International, Inc., General Wilson retired from an Army career that began when he swore in as an E-1 recruit and ended with him as a four-star general, commanding officer of the Army Material Command. Dr. James Andrade's expertise is in finding out why we eat what we eat. Now VP of Research and Development Asia-Pacific for Kraft Foods, Inc., he was formerly the Senior Director of Research and Innovative Applications for the North America Division. Dallas Delaney is Operations Manager, Abbott Park Finishing Goods Manufacturing for Global Pharmaceuticals Operations. His assignments have taken him to the Far East, managing key product launches for Abbott, a healthcare and agricultural products company with operations in 130 countries. George A. Williams is one of the specialists who help keep Entergy Corporation's nuclear plants operating safely at peak power. He began his nuclear career at Philadelphia Electric Company's Limerick Nuclear Station. Now he's VP Operations for Entergy's Grand Gulf Station on the Mississippi River. Ladies and gentlemen, George A. Williams. Good evening. It is truly an honor to be here among so many great leaders this evening. I mean, I am truly honored. First and foremost, I would like to give thanks to God for affording me the opportunity to be here this evening. Second, I'd like to uh, thank my family, and this is both my immediate family and my Entergy family. Last but not least, I'd like to thank the U.S. Black <coughs> Engineer and in Information Technology for this most prestigious recognition. Fear, like a deer mesmerized by oncoming headlights, is stand still, afraid that any movement will be wrong, when in reality, motion is the only thing that can save it. Similarly, many people stay in a place they don't particularly like, doing work that does not challenge or inspire them, simply because they don't know what they want and are afraid to take action and make movement in their life. They're afraid of change and what might happen if they take the wrong action. I realized a long time ago that we are all standing in the headlights of life and the only wrong action is to take no action at all. In the end, any action I take will generate energy and take me from a place of stillness into motion. Action gave me information, insight, and wisdom to build my future upon. My advice to the young leaders of the future is do not be afraid to be a pioneer. I've had many firsts during my lifetime, of which I'm very proud of. Everything from being the first in my family to obtain a college degree to being the first vice president of a nuclear generating facility for Entergy Corpor- Corporation. That is truly an honor for me. The key is do not be afraid to be a pioneer. That is extremely important. Next, I'd like to say it is extremely important that you are not afraid to use obstacles as a stepping stone to success. Take advantage of your challenges and use them as learning opportunities. Last but not least, education must be at the very foundation of anything you choose to do in life. Without some level of education beyond high school, 
you will be limited as to how much you can achieve. Again, thank you very much for this great honor this evening, and God bless. When it comes to those who are changing the world of technology, there are many notables in the spotlight. Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute President Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson has had a storied career as a physicist, first at AT&T Bell Laboratories, and then as the first black woman member, then chair, of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. MIT Chancellor Dr. Philip L. Clay is cutting an enviable record of his own. Professor Clay, himself an MIT Ph.D. in city planning, has been on the MIT faculty for three decades, rising through several key posts, including assistant director of the Harvard-MIT Joint Center for Urban Studies, associate and then department head in urban studies and planning, associate provost, and now chancellor. Will Cooksey Jr. turned his lifelong passion for muscle cars into the pursuit of excellence. Will, an Army-decorated Vietnam veteran, joined General Motors as an assistant professor of industrial engineering at General Motors Institute, now Kettering University. When he got his dream job running the world's only Corvette plant, Will, who had bought a Corvette as soon as he returned from the rice paddies of Vietnam, quickly set about retraining and reinvigorating the workforce at the aging facility and restoring the quality and reliability of Corvettes. As corporate CIO and executive vice president of Wachovia, Martin Davis works technical magic in the world of banking. Martin, who has worked in several systems development roles, then has marched up a stepladder's worth of senior vice presidencies to arrive at his present post. Norma Clayton is VP of Supplier Management for Boeing Integrated Defense Systems. She's responsible for all subcontract and procurement matters, including policymaking and implementation, subcontract oversight, and process improvement. In such hands as hers lies the future of the American aviation industry. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight while we celebrate the portraits of greatness, what better time than right now to celebrate the greats in black music? In fact, if you feel the urge to sing out, we're counting on you to be one hell of a backup group. <laughs> now here to bring them to you are our own greats, a true treasure trove of talent. From Baltimore, in the tradition of Sonny Till and the Orioles, the Cardinals, the Swallows, Bill Kenny and the Ink Spots, come the Blue Lights. Featuring the original 1967 members, Lee Gordon, lead singer with the Towns Brothers, Al and Phil, joined by newcomers Lou Law and Yvonne. And right along with them, the Gumption Group, with Corey Brooks on keyboard and the great Lady A. You just can't get any greater than this. It's the same as yesterday When he said You're all I need To get by Took one look at you, well, and it was plain to see that you were my destiny. With arms open wide, I threw away my pride. I'll sacrifice for you, dedicate my life to you. I will go where you need, always there in time of need. And when I lose my will, you'll be there to push me up.